right, I'd like to uh, jump in and talk about dreams on a new level. This is the fourth lecture on exploring dreams. What we are dealing with is the problem of symbols first, then the logos, and then meditation. Now, psychology has taken over, as it were, the whole world of symbols, archetypes, monads, and chief among them, of course, are Freud and Jung. Now, what is meant by a symbol is very important for the whole evening, so let me get it very clear from the beginning. A symbol is an image that comes from the inner dynamics of the psyche and therefore it expresses an intra-psychic conflict. It's not universal, it's personal, and it's historical. Now, I have a couple of interesting and simple quotes for you. I want to make sure this comes from Carl Jung. Right. That symbols are intra-psychic phenomena. They occur when people have personal conflicts and therefore it expresses in essence an irrational life. So when you have people going through conflicts, right, if there's a conflict, it's within themselves, that means it's intra-inner, within the psyche itself. And therefore, for the individual and the way it expresses itself, it is a irrational aspect of human life. Not rational, it's an irrational aspect of life. Here's a good quote for it. It is an irrational life process which expresses itself in definite symbols. That's what a symbol is. It's not a mandala, which is something different. So therefore, when a person has an inner conflict, it's because within it, there's a war going on between different forces on a psychic level. And it's a war because the psyche is seen by Freud and Carl Jung as a dynamic process of forces, forces coming together. Therefore, the ability of the psyche to resolve those conflicts means then that there is a unification of the opposites, these opposite forces, and that process of the unification of these opposite forces brings about all of the symbols that Freud and Jung use in their studies. That's what they want to grasp. What is it? For them, this irrational conflict produces symbols. And the goal of the human being, of course, is to resolve those conflicts. And therefore, when it is resolved, it's called the unification of the opposites. We should add for ourselves, it's a unification of opposite forces within the psyche. Therefore, all symbols in dream analysis for both Freud and Jung must always be traced back to one's personal history. Symbols are not allegories and they're not signs, S-I-G-N-S. They are images of the, context, of the contents which for the most part transcend consciousness. It 
it's absolutely necessary for us to come to terms with the symbols of the unconscious. If we become fascinated with the symbols from the unconscious, that produces a displacement of all of these energies and we get further into our own conflict and our own human suffering. Therefore, it's absolutely necessary for us to come to terms with it. How do you do it? All right, here's Jung's great quote. It's necessary with any symbol for the person who's experiencing it to find associations with them, personal associations with them, personal associations with them. The associations contain all the necessary clues that will enable the patient with a little reflection to guess what the fantasy figures mean and to use the symbols as uh, as a way of assimilating the unconscious contents. That's what he's doing. That's how you assimilate the unconscious contents. Each symbol represents aspects of this conflict. Therefore, if you get the patient to associate with it and try to reflect on it, then they'll make sense from their own personal history. They make sense out of it on their own personal history, and that releases them from the power and the fascination of those symbols. Therefore, symbols are locked, locked up and manifest themselves out of, from the, in the psychic realm. That's their origin, they emerge from it, they express the conflict. The subject then has to then make associations with it, go back into their personal past to make connections with them, and that process is a healing process. Now, Jung says, notice, this is all within intra-psychic. Intra Therefore, Jung says, and here's a quote, Psychology as a science has to hold aloof from all metaphysical assertions, must keep free of all metaphysical assertions. Therefore, the whole realm of philosophy and metaphysics must be ignored because they are intra-psychic conflicts. There's another reason, by the way, for that, simpler one. Psychology follows the model of medicine. Medicine per 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 makes a claim that all within the body is their domain. They can talk about it with authority. That's their domain. Psychology comes along and it says, we, we make a claim to make a claim that we are the knowers of everything going on within the inner psychic life of man and its connections with the emotional system of man. Therefore, it must be confined within it Therefore, if you can't get out of that, that individual intra-psychic situation, therefore, if you can't get out of it, there's no need to get out of it, there's no need for philosophy or metaphysics, because that's the way out of the personal realm. Now, suppose there are people, however, who are on a quest for meaning, personal meaning that goes beyond intra-psychic events. Well, psychology can study them in terms of, what's, of the way in which they report their inner experiences. How do they do it? They explore how the subject reports their inner experience. That allows them to remain in the field of psychology. They make no claim about the reality of those statements. They make no claim as to the truth of them. All they want to say is that people say this and they go through these kinds of experiences, but they make no judgment about the truth or the reality of any of the statements made. Now, 
when people go on a philosophical quest, a meaningful quest called the transpersonal quest, which is then suprapersonal, so you can have three kinds of problems. You can have a intrapersonal problem that's within yourself. You can you can have uh, intro. You can have the, the next, which is uh, inter personal problem that's between people that's, so, that's sociology and you can have kinds of problems which are su suprapersonal that has nothing to do with the intrapsychic dimensions it has no relationship with the sociologies and the problem of people relating to one another this has been called the realm of philosophy used to be <clears throat> now in the west Philosophy has degenerated into its usual form in the colleges and no one even wants to talk about the fact that one can have a spiritual journey and they have all kinds of works on, in philosophy in the past dealing with it. Most modern philosophers don't want to explore it. Carl Jung came along and he did an amazing thing. He said, I can study it. I can study the people who are on this quest because really there's a model for this quest. And the model for this quest you can find in alchemy. Since alchemy is really nothing other than a symbolic representation of those people who are going on a transpersonal, <clears throat> a suprapersonal spiritual quest. Therefore, he has all of these great works on the relationship between psychology and alchemy. But, remember now, for someone going through this, what they experience, they think, has a reality independent of themselves. Carl Jung and Freud, especially Carl Jung, says again and again and again, we can never make a judgment about the truth or, or the reality of anybody's experience. We can only deal with the fact that they make statements about their own experience. That's the line. As long as they keep that line, they're still in the field of psychology and psychotherapy. Now, look here. That leads us into a new problem. When you're dealing with symbols on a transpersonal level, then Carl Jung has a new set of words for them. Sometimes he calls them collective archetypes, but he also calls them mandalas. Now, you and I might say, what's the difference between a symbol and a mandala? Remember, a symbol is nothing other than a symbolic way of representing an intrapersonal conflict. That's all it is. That's what he calls it. That's how he separates it. Now, all of these people who are on these great spiritual quests don't have an intrapersonal conflict. They have a quest to reach the, an insight into the nature of ultimate reality. Now, Carl Jung says, this material on alchemy came into the West. It was translated for the first time in the 15th century. And the first translator was Ficino, who was the great translator of all of Plato and Plotinus and uh, parts of Aristotle. And now, now, I have a curiosity. Remember the earlier statement, all psychology must stand aloof from metaphysical assertions, but now he's exploring alchemy as a model to represent the transpersonal quests of people engaged in quest for enlightenment. Now, he must avoid metaphysics, metaphysics of course is philosophy, so what does he do? Well, this is what he does. <clears throat> These are the true great figures in alchemy. Richardus Anglicus and Bernardo of Trevisio. Right. Now I'm going to read you a couple of quotes. One from Richard and the other one from Bernard. And I'm going to do it to serve one, it's going to serve one, one purpose, and that's going to show you the connection 
between alchemy and philosophy. That's the goal. What is the connection between the two? Now, people in Europe didn't have philosophy as I understand it and as uh, what was called the perennial philosophy, a spiritual basis for uh, the philosophical quest until the 15th century because there was no literature available before the 15th century. That's easy. You can make that claim very simply. The literature was not available. Now, people nonetheless were interested in the spiritual quest and why did they use alchemy and all the symbols of alchemy? In order to disguise their spiritual efforts from the Inquisition. I'm not saying that, Carl Jung is saying that, and other historians have said the same thing. Therefore, when they were doing alchemy, they were really doing philosophy. Let's see if we can make that point by two quotes from Richardus Anglicus and Bernardo of Treviso. key work that there are many uh, one of the very interesting ones of uh, alchemy uh, is from Dorn D-O-R-N and uh, before I get into Richardus I thought I'd read you a quote from him I pray you look with the eyes of the mind at the little tree of the grain of wheat regarding all its circumstances. Look with the eyes of the mind at the little tree of the grain of wheat, watching the grain of wheat, regarding all its circumstances so that you may bring the tree of the philosophers to grow. goal in philosophy is to understand the nature of reality as one. Here's a quote from Dorn. Out of other things that will never make the one until you have first become one yourself. Then he quotes from the Rosarium Philosophical Forum, Philosophorum, who therefore knows the salt and its solution, knows the hidden secret of the wise men of old. Therefore, turn your mind upon the salt, for it alone, that is the mind, the salt is the mind, is the science concealed and the most excellent and the most hidden secret of all the ancient philosophers. Therefore, direct your feelings, senses, and reason and thoughts upon this salt alone. What's the salt? According to the quote, the mind. All right, without a background, I'm now going to read the quote from Richardus. Therefore, all those who desire to attain the blessing of this art should apply themselves to study, should gather the truth from the books and not from invented fables and untruthful works. There is no way by which this art can, can truly be found except by completing their studies and understanding the words of the philosophers. Bernardo of Treviso tells us how he struggled in vain for many years till at last he was led on the right path through finding a particular work and the work was 
the Parmenides, a sermon in the Turba. Here's the quote from Bernard. He should collect the books of different authors because otherwise it's impossible to understand them. He should not throw aside a book which he has read once, twice, or even three times, although he has not understood it. But he should read it again and again and again, 10, 20, 50 times, or even more. At last he will see wherein the authors are mainly agreed. Here the truth lies. It's owing to the ignorance, now this is a, I'm quoting Young, it's owing to the ignorance of men, right? who are not able to accomplish the work until they've studied universal philosophy, which will show them things that are unknown and hidden from others. Quote now from Lully. Therefore, our stone belongs not to the vulgar, but to the very heart of our philosophy. Therefore, says this great Lully, we must devote, the object then is devote oneself to the study of the books of the old philosophers and to acquaint themselves or himself with the very material of philosophy, which is Parmenides. Richard Alcus, Angelicus again, turn back to the way of truth of which you're ignorant I counsel you for your own sake to study and to labor with steadfast meditation on the words of the philosophers, whence the truth can then be summoned forth. The, now this is Carl Jung. The importance of the, or necessity of understanding and intelligence is insisted upon through all this literature, not only because intelligence above the ordinary is needed to the performance of so difficult work, but because it's assumed that a species, species of magical power capable of transforming even the brute matter dwells within the human mind. Dorn says, this is another alchemist, in truth, the form, which is the intellect of man, is the beginning, middle, and end of the whole process. Well, I selected these quotes to try to show you that people who were leading thinkers in this alchemical movement where were they not? They were doing several things. Number one, they sought to gain the books of the philosophers. They were just being translated from Chino. Get the books of the philosophers. Intently study them. Make them the object of attention. Intently study them many, many, many times. The Chinese have a great line, the Taoists have a great line. If you want to study a work, make sure you've studied it at least a hundred times. You can understand anything if you read it a hundred times. All right, third step. It becomes an object of meditation. Bernard of Trevisio goes right along with this and he goes one step further. He says the key work that he found which turned him around was a sermon on Parmenides. And Parmenides is that great author of the whole thought dealing with the nature of reality as one. Therefore, Alchemy was the contemporary way of studying classic philosophy. It was coming into the West at that time, disguised to escape the injustices of the Inquisition. They had a purely intellectual way of doing it, and they sought, according to Bernard of Tavisio and Dorn, the whole object is to awaken the intellect. Turn the intellect around. 
when you do that when you're involved in that quest you're awaking first understanding and you're following the words and that is the logos as that becomes a conscious effort at coming to grips with yourself and the nature of mind not the particular individual mind but the nature of mind that becomes naturally it moves to, to, from the logos to an object of meditation a natural object of meditation because it's the focus of all your energies you're using understanding you're training the mind and you're awaking the intellect Now you might say now going back to it how can Jung therefore be so indifferent or at times hostile to the whole, whole idea of metaphysics he knows as he said in many other places that he has to stay within the confines of the human psyche or he becomes a philosopher and in one work by the way he said there are times when he calls himself a philosopher rather than a psychologist so if you need that quote, I have it. Is that because he didn't want to, why would he want to be a philosopher? What did we say? The boundary? What's the boundary? Well, What's the boundary? That's right. Basically when you're said. philosophical, what are you doing? You're making a claim that there's something real, independent, above, supra-personal, supra-personal, is that right? Is that then within the psyche? Conclusion? So you want to make a judgment about what is real? Well, if he did, if something real is ex... Pardon me? Yeah. If something was real outside, then it would be transpersonal. Would be and therefore, as far as he's concerned, he made a deal with psychology. Why psychology has to do that is another issue, by the way. It may not have to, but we're talking about these great thinkers that have promulgated these systems. And I thought, therefore, it would be important to say that the real goal of philosophy is this. This is still the ancient goal of philosophy. It's now back in the West for the first time since the 15th, since the 15th century. It was gone for a thousand years. And therefore, returning to it, that becomes alchemy when it's hidden. When it's overt and not hidden and displayed, then it becomes a Neoplatonic quest because that is what Neoplatonic thought is. The Parmenides, seek to understand Parmenides, what's it called? Platonic or Neoplatonic thought. Now, how does that relate to dreams? There are two forces going on. There are two forces going on. There's an effort to clear up the intrapersonal inner inner conflicts, and there's also the quest to try to go beyond it and reach transpersonal goals. When this is identified with philosophy, which is what it is and it's done exactly the way it's described in these works which is exactly the way Neoplatonists have been doing it for all of these years then something enters into the human psyche that is different from the culture we live in alchemy had to hide to be safe so therefore now you have two classes you have two classes of people necessarily those who are ignorant of this transpersonal goals and this kind of philosophy right? and those who are not these people are not aware of this very profound philosophy that exists therefore equally well they have no method to go on a transpersonal quest or they convert a transpersonal quest to a religious quest 
and become therefore identified with Christianity or any of the, one of the religions. That's the extent of their search. So some of these then become joined with religious groups, others do not. Now what happens to this group? This group are aware of the different religions. They may choose not to opt for that religious view, but to take on this transpersonal quest. And when they do it, they may still have work to do on themselves. Therefore, they're going to have an interesting kind of dream. These people have different kinds of dreams. These people, I assure you, have different kinds of dreams. Those people who have no spiritual life of any kind or philosophical life have one class of dreams. Those who uh, want something beyond that and opt for the religious group, they have a different kind of group. Uh, that's a different kind of group. They have different kind of dreams. The people who are on a spiritual quest they have a different attitude towards the mind. They have a different attitude towards their, to the intellect. They have, interestingly enough, an interesting grasp of dreams. Because, here's the, here's the reason now. The reason is pretty obvious. Look here. Suppose the methods, suppose the methods of dream analysis, let's do it. Suppose the method of dream analysis is the same as that of doing this philosophy. Then it's natural to use the same method that you're exploring in the philosophical realm on your own dreams. There is an inner, there is an inner connection between your transpersonal goals and the method for dream analysis. And therefore, let's correct our figure. These people obviously have in, intra-psychic problems, but they have something else going for themselves. They're also going for transpersonal goals. Now, the very process of going after transpersonal goals uses a method, that same method they're going to explore their own dream world. Therefore, there's a kinship between themselves and their inner conflicts. The method is the same. Therefore, if, this, if the success of this method, if the success of the method depends upon dedication and practice, if the success of the method depends upon dedication and practice, in order to gain insight, right, that's the goal, open the mind to insight, that's the goal, to open the mind to insight, Then, whether they're studying philosophy in the way in which they're studying it, or they're studying dreams, it's the same thing. There's a kinship. <clears throat> and therefore, with that kinship, they're using this method, both in philosophy and dream analysis, it's the same thing, and therefore, they're becoming acquainted with another level of dream work for one big reason, and let's see if we can make that clear now and then we can go into an example. That one of the goals, one of the goals of dream analysis that I'm talking about based upon philosophical techniques is to try to use the mind, use your experience to see if you can get an insight into the dream Right? The dream maker or the dream master. The creator of our dreams. The more concern there is for this, the more the person becomes philosophical in this Platonic sense. Why? 
because the goal of the nature, the nature of the philosophy, the whole quest of the nature of the philosophy is to gain an insight into the nature of, what did we call it before? To awaken the intellect. That's not my intellect, that's intellect, to awaken intellect. Would you agree the dream master is a fantastic thing, whatever it is, we can talk about it this way, it creates dreams, it dramatizes them, it selects and analyzes, it diagnoses, offers up a statement about the condition of our inner conflicts, presents it to us each night, uses our personal history, can bring up all kinds of images that are perfectly attuned to our conflict and perfectly represent our conflict, so that by studying them then, we can get an insight into what's blocking us. Ah, all of those things mean there's an intellect at work. Therefore, our dream master is, another name for the dream master is, the intellect. Same goal, same thing driving it. Therefore, it's the nature of mind at work and dreams. The dream master is the intellect functioning for our personal good, yet working for a transpersonal goal. That means, ideally, people who have conflicts should be objects of study. We should get the people, instead of putting them into jail or mental hospitals, we should sit them down and say, let's talk about the beliefs and let's see whether we can get to the root of your conflict. Let's see what has influenced you, what kinds of ideas have influenced you and mold you to act out in the way you do. Every courtroom should not be a sentencing game prison game, but a way of exploring collectively, bringing all our talent to bear on it, why a person does what they do. Because if they can see why they do what they do, they'll be free of it. Therefore, this whole thing can reshape society. Because it can reshape man. So, would you not agree it's time now to pull out a dream? and Let's see if we can look at one. I asked, do you have a dream? All right, let's see if we can now play the analysis and let's see then if we can link it to these things we've just described, okay? Shall we do it? Let's take a moment for him. Let me just take this off. <clears throat> Thank you, first. My dream uh by the way, I have no knowledge of this dream. I haven't talked to you about the dream before, have I? No. Right. Okay, go ahead. My dream is a, a three-parter. It, uh, it happened through, uh, it, it came to me at different times of the night, uh, different parts of it. And the first part that came to me was uh, a starry sky. And it, as a matter of fact, it was the Milky Way and I could see uh, I could see uh, Scorpio, and uh, I could see uh, Jupiter. And uh, this image uh, was implanted in my soul the night before. It was implanted? In my, yeah, it was the night before. Yeah, and keep talking, I want to make sure I understand. Okay, this, uh, this dream that I, the, 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 I saw the Milky Way, it was... Uh, it had a, a north-south direction. The mm -hmm. Milky Way had a north-south direction. It was from, about eight, from 11 o'clock to about 5 o'clock. And Scorpio was, uh, was at uh, about 12 o'clock, and so was Jupiter. And uh, it, it, it was real vivid in my mind. The night before, I was out uh, working. And I was up in the mountains in uh, this place known as Dark Canyon. And uh, I had finished picking up my last sign and I looked up to the sky and I had never seen the sky so beautiful and so clear and so, so vivid. And it just, I looked at it for a couple of seconds and I, and I put it into my heart and, and I got back to work and went back home. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that night that image kept on coming back into my mind, that beautiful image of the sky. And after that, I, I saw 
an image of a skeleton, the upper torso of, an el of a skeleton. I can see it's uh, uh, the skull, and and uh, and it's uh, uh, its chest. Mm -hmm. The part that that uh, my mind kept uh, going to was the three ribs of, of the of the right side of it. Three ribs of the right side of the, of the, of the mm -hmm. torso of the, of the skeleton. Then, those. Then I, later on, uh, I had been working all that week on uh, on the chin, and uh, the the image that came to my mind at that point was the the three lines, the three firm lines of heaven, and I. Those three images just kept uh, sticking to my mind. The starry heavens, the torso of, of uh, the skeleton, it was focused into the three ribs, and then the trigram of, uh, of heaven. The but, but that wasn't in the dream. In the dream too. Oh, no, was this in the dream when you just yes. said? Okay. That was part of the content of the dream. Yes. Not your reflection on it later. No. Okay. It was part of the dream, the, 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 the trigram. Okay. So I had those three things in my mind, mm -hmm. and there was no words that came to my mind other than mm -hmm. the images of, of the Milky Way, mm -hmm. the skeleton, mm -hmm. and the trigram. Mm -hmm. Good. That's it. I thought there was a third part. Are you saying this is the third part? That's the third part. Ah, okay. Okay, would you please go back over it, and when you do so, any, any kind of detail that you have about yourself in the dream, please let us know about it. All right? First, all right, as you reflect back on it, Jupiter, all right, Scorpio, the Milky Way, went on from 11 to 5 a.m. at 12 o'clock, you had a north-south direction. It was a very vivid dream. Right. Where were you in that dream? I was looking up at it. I was in, in, in the canyon, like, like it is on the right there. Ah, so you were sitting in the dream? Standing. What? Standing. All right. And looking up. And looking up, okay. So this is the image in the dream? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What state of mind was that? Is it clear, vivid, beautiful? Clear, vivid, beautiful. Uh, Ah, uh, in awe. Want to add to that? Anything to before I go on? Okay. Second, you're now looking at the skeleton, torso, rib cage. You're focused on the right side of it, the three ribs. All right. What state of mind, please? Puzzled. Puzzled. Go ahead. More. Um, in my dream, I, 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 I just, just puzzled. I, uh, there wasn't a lot of, uh, of uh, words going on. Just, uh, just looking at the, at the, at the skeleton, and then just, just puzzled as to, as to why the, why the skeleton. Say it again. As to why, I was puzzled as why? to why the skeleton. Why the skeleton? Because, come on, because, why the skeleton? Because, come on. Because a skeleton is, is a, a typically a symbol of death. Was that in the dream? No. Now stay in the dream. Stay no, in the dream. Puzzle, just a puzzle, just a puzzle, but no, no, no worries. No worry, but a puzzle. Yeah. As if what? Have you ever been in that state? Uh, yeah. Puzzled, but yet not worried? Exactly. Yeah, could you give an example of it? What? Yes, like when I'm uh, looking for a study and I'm looking for an answer to, to something that, I, that I've uh, encountered in my readings. And I continue looking at it for, for, uh, for an answer. Uh, it's a good puzzlement, it's not a bad puzzlement. Good, good, thank you. Okay. Third scene. The third scene. Where are you in that, please? It was later. Me, uh, no, nowhere. It's, I just saw 
I, I could see in my mind, I could see I, it all put, came together and into one bowl. On the left, I could see the starry sky. In the middle, I could see the skeleton. And on the right, I could see. So then this was a composite. Yes. Therefore, you were in it as a subject. Just a viewer. As a viewer. All right. What state of mind, sir? What state of mind? A working state of mind. A working. Working state of mind. Uh, like studying. Study? Study. A studious state of mind. That's the best thing I can put on it. A studious state of mind. Looking intently. Looking intently. Okay, look, at the first one, you just had the starry heavens. Here you have the skeleton, ribs. Here you have all three present at once. Huh? Uh, what's it like being present than seeing all three at once? It's a studious state. You're looking intently. Uh, anything more you want to say about it? Yeah, at, that, at the third Point, mm -hmm. I started putting things together in my mind. Uh -huh. In the dream? Yeah, but yes, but it's hard to, to separate now what what I put together in the dream and what I put together afterwards. So you continued meditating, as it were, on the dream later, yes. and it's now difficult to decide whether it fit in the dream or you were doing it after, but you were continuing the same line of thought both in the dream and out of the dream. Yeah, That's a continuous a state of meditation that you pick up from the dream world and you're continuing it and it's natural and you're just going along with it. So just make, keep talking about it in that way. And uh, as I was waking up, uh, the connections came uh, more clear. What? what? And the connections were more clear as I was waking up in the morning. Um, talk about it, more care means more what? More clear. More, well, more such clear. as? Uh, for what instance, was what was more clear? The meaning of it. Well, what was it? Well, to me, the meaning that I that I got was the the skeleton was uh, the reason it was a skeleton was because of the ribs, and it was the three ribs were the three. Uh, that was the first connection I made. The three ribs were the no. the the the, the trigram. Oh, the trigram. Of heaven. Yeah, no. yeah. No. And. As I kept on uh, thinking on it, the next connection I made was that the firm was uh, th that idea of heaven connected with the, with the starry sky. And then I saw how the starry sky was also in, in the ancient books known as, as the firmament. Heaven was known as the firmament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But still, I, I was somewhat puzzled as to why a skeleton, and then That's I right. came with yeah. a further connection later, uh -huh. as to because it's the inside, it's, it's the very the structure, the very uh, strength of the body. Okay. Go back into the, consider the dream now. All right. You're puzzled. You're looking at the skeleton. You're puzzled. You're just looking at the ribs on the right side of the rib cage. Remember, there you are, okay. Yes, that's a structure, but it's another distinction within the structure, isn't it? It's just the torso on the right side. You're puzzled about it. Right, right. You know the state of being puzzled. It's like looking for an answer in your reading. Right. You've, been there be you've been there before. This is a state you know about. Right. And now you're seeing it in your dream over the skeleton, aren't you? Right. Talk about that skeleton in the dream. Just keep talking about it, please. Right. No, just go ahead. Just talk about it. I, uh, 
why my, my mind focused on, on that other thing. That's okay. Just talk about the skeleton. That's all. And any way you want. Talk about anything. Just keep the idea of the skeleton, the upper torso of the skeleton, the ribs on the right hand side of it. Consider the state you're in, puzzle. Go ahead. I stayed in, in, the, in that uh, middle part of it for a while, and uh, it wasn't what I. I just stayed in the, in the, in the state of puzzlement until later on in the dream of the, the trigram. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to go there yet. I want to stay there. Okay. It's like looking for an answer in your reading. That's what the state of mind is. Well, that's interesting. That's good to hear. All right. Nice connection. All right. Talk about the skeleton. Any way you want. Talk about skeleton. I, uh, I was it. looking at, at the skeleton and uh, I just saw that it was just the upper half of the skeleton and uh, the skull and the arms and uh, the bottom half was not there. No. Mm -hmm. And uh, that struck me as funny later. Yeah. Because, come on. Why not the full skeleton? Why no, why not the full? That's absolutely right. See? So you're reflecting on it. How come it's, if it's going to be a skeleton, how come it's only half? That's right. It's half half. Yeah. Talk about the idea of a skeleton, please. Come on, just talk about it. Human skeleton. What you had a dream, had the image in your dream. Talk about the skeleton, please. where you want to focus it. Right, you're drawn to it, right? The three rows. Right? You're drawn there. Right? Certain fascination, right? Yes. Right? You're focused there. That's right. Attracted by it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, talk about ribs. Come on, just talk about ribs, skeleton. Go ahead. Any way you want. Well, I mean... This was not in my, in my dream. That's right. But You're stepping out of the dream at this point. That's right. But uh, the ribs uh, was also something to do with, uh, with the biblical story of Adam and, and, uh, and how God created woman out of, uh, out of a rib. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you have uh, more. Go ahead. Biblical account. Go ahead. That comes to you first. Go ahead. Um, a thing that I found funny was that the, the right side is not the side with the heart. No. That's right. Good. Good. No heart. It's not the side of the heart. Good. Good. But you're fascinated by it. You're focusing on it. You find yourself drawn towards it. You said before also that it's an inside structure. Yes. Right. It's, it's, a, it's an anatomical structure. It's a structure behind the, the frame. Yes. The, yes. the firmament. Yeah. The firmament of, of the body. Uh, previously you used the idea of the firmament, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's not the side of the heart, not concerned with the heart, you're drawn to the right side. Uh, what's the right side of man? Right now I just thought that it's, it's for the, the 
spiritual things. Okay, spiritual harm. Mm -hmm. So you're drawn to it. You're puzzled by it. This is a state you're familiar with. What it represents so far to you is that it's an inside structure, upper part. It's not the side of the heart. It had images of the rib of Adam and the firmament. That's right, that's what it is. But it's three, not one. Also, another thing that uh, that would make sense with that is that since I only saw the upper part of the skeleton uh, going along with the, uh, the trigram, uh, that's the trigram of heaven. So the trigram that would go with that would be uh, below that, the lower half would be the, the earth. earth yes. Oh, no, that's the upper. See. So, You've got upper here, you've got upper here, you've got upper here. Right, you've got one theme going through three places. And here it was vivid, right? You also got a threesome there. You got Jupiter, Scorpio, and the Milky Way. It was clear, vivid, and beautiful. It reminded you of the preceding day. You stood in awe of it. See, now we're collecting three states. All right. Awe, puzzled, puzzled, without worry, puzzled, awe, and the three come together. And now that when the three come together, there's more clarity. All right. uh, it seemed to you as you walked away and as you reflected on it more, you're seeing more about it. Huh? And what did you see about it? I felt uh, pretty good. I still do. I, yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's okay, you see. Um, we have one theme that's going through three phases. And would you agree you're drawn back to the puzzle? In a sense, this isn't a problem. This isn't a problem. This is. And you can certainly benefit by the dream and make a lot of connections. But you are puzzled still about the choice of this image in your dream. Yes, I am. Mm hmm. Now, I'm going to move into what you said a moment ago. Uh, it's, this puzzled state is like looking for an answer in my reading. Uh, were you looking, at, was that a state recent, recently experienced? Did you have that experience re in terms of the dream, before the dream? Were you in a work and puzzled? Yes, I was. What work? Uh, the chain. I was putting together Actually, the Ching and Homer's uh, and, uh, uh, Odyssey mm -hmm. and the Republic. And I was putting together a, a comparative study uh, between Homer and, and the Ching to uh, present to on our Saturday night reading. And uh, this was the night before the reading that I had this dream. Okay. I had been trying to get together. Uh, I was I was hurrying to get the work done. Uh, I wanted I wanted to complete it. And uh, that night I had got the, the call out to go uh, close the road because there was a fire. Okay. And it kind of upset me because I was being taken away from, from my work. Yeah. Not yeah. Please look at the way in which you describe this. You're looking for an answer in your reading. All right. Did you have a question? What was the question? Because this is an interesting way of describing something. 
I have all kinds of questions. No, no. At the time when you were puzzled, you say you were looking for an answer in my reading. They were three works you were dealing with, The Odyssey, The Republic, and The I Ching. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Yes, yes. Fine. The, what question? The question that I had particular in mind was if I was, if I was going to be able to, to uh, bring it out. If I was going to get it all together, the paper, the study, and also to, to present it uh, uh, to the group. Okay, let me ask it again. Okay, and another one. Did you have a particular idea you wanted to bring together? Or were you just reading, waiting for the three to come together? Uh, I, had, I had definite ideas as to how they... I had brought them together pretty, pretty well in, in my own mind. The only thing that needed to be done was for me to give it a voice to explain and, and bring a further connection to it. In, okay. In what was the idea you were working on that would bring these three together? What idea were you working on? The idea of return. Now, the, the idea of return in the Book of Changes of the solid lines are all the themes that the Chinese philosophers, especially in the Confucian school, use that, are, that is associated with return. That's the object of their return. The Odyssey, the whole Odyssey, the object of the Odyssey is a return. Return of Odysseus to his Ithaca, right? The Republic, it's a, it's a quest. All right. Now, did you have any particular... See, I'm looking now. So you're looking for an answer in your reading. Are you just looking for the idea of return as expressed in these three works? Or did you have a particular question about the return in these three works that you were researching? The question was not so so much of, of return as it was with, with my with my own self, but more on the intrapersonal, more on the uh, would I be able to deliver, and I wanted to deliver uh, through that. I wanted to bring out the idea and. Uh, I wanted to put it all together. And was there any difficulty that you saw in trying to bring out the idea of return in any of these three works, or all of them? That's all. See, I'm going back to one thing. Did you have a particular question that you were puzzled about in these three works that you were trying to bring together? Because you could stand in awe of the works. Right? You could be very clear. But there's something about it that's puzzling. So, hold that. Let me ask you again, sir. You're looking at three works. You're dealing with one theme, the idea of return. You now want to present that idea before a group of people. Yes, okay. Do you see any difficulty in communicating the idea of return in terms of the work that you have researched, not the personal difficulty in communicating your insight to others? I'm putting that aside for a moment. If you were to get up and give a talk about these three works in terms of the idea of return, do you have the sense that you know the material well enough that you're able to present it without any difficulty? I can present it uh, without difficulty uh, still. If what? Without difficulty. Would, would, uh, I, I wouldn't say that, not without difficulty, but uh, I could present it. And 
I was hoping that uh, that uh, that uh, I could be given further insight into the work that I was putting together by uh, the people present. But you're not looking for any particular insights into the work, but just in general you were hoping that the audience would be able to contribute. Yes. Because at this point, you're saying you don't have any difficulties, you haven't encountered any difficulties in mastering the material of the idea of return as found in these three works. That's correct. Right. And your dream is coming back and giving you this. It's significant that that vision took place at 12 o'clock, midnight in the dream, right? It occurred between 11 and 5, but you're saying the particular way in which you experienced it, that this was a 12. It was a north and south meridian, right? Very clear, right? It was clear, vivid, and beautiful. You have the way in which you can relate it with the three lines in the trigram. But now there's something curious. And your mind is giving you this image and it's saying that you are puzzled about it. But in your talk about the way in which you see yourself presenting this, you don't, ant you, so far you don't anticipate anything puzzling about dealing with the material. Are we together? Yes. But it looks like your dream is holding up something and saying, excuse me, there's something puzzling going on here. The language is very interesting. You're dealing with the upper structure of these three works, the upper structure of these three works, perhaps, right? Uh, you're focused on the part that has, it's not the side of the heart, but as you called it, you remember when you reflected on it, you said it could be the spiritual heart. Huh? Okay, but see, you're approaching this with puzzlement. And we're sitting here saying, well, where's the puzzle? You're saying, I think I can handle the content of this dream. I think it represents what, may, what I may be dealing with in my everyday world. This is my world, where you're going to go before a group and talk about these three works. And I keep asking you for, are you working on any question? And you're not working on any question. Because you're working on the idea of return. Okay, would you agree that's called a correlation study? You just want to see how three works relate with this one idea. You're look, just looking for similarities and differences, aren't you? Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so that you're not driven to, you're not driven with any question. No. You just want to make correlations between what exists in front of you. One, two, three. Yeah, I just want to understand, you know, I'm not driven by questions. No, yeah. no. Yeah. But you're not being driven by any puzzle, are you? doing something curious then. It's saying, wait a minute, there's something puzzling here. And you're fascinated by a skeleton. Something dead, or however that goes. And you're focusing on the right-hand side of it, where the three ribs are. Do you mind if I try a, a, a curious question on you? Sure. Okay. Are 
any of these, are these works uh, bilingual? Yes. Are you working in bilingual texts? Yes. Is the right hand side the English? Uh, yes. Are you ignoring the left hand side? No, not ignoring it totally. Pardon? Not totally, no, I, 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 I look at the left hand side too. Find any puzzles on the right hand side that you're not looking at on the left hand side? Yes. Good heavens, what are they? Could you mention a couple? Um, one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a whole bunch of them actually. Just okay, go ahead. There's uh, the one that, uh, that you gave me uh, for the relationship of what happens in the uh, underworld, in the cave. The it's land of the dead. Go ahead. It's directly uh, correlated with what happens in, the, in real life, in, in our world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found another one where after he describes the ideal state and he goes into the digression of, of, of the degeneration of, of the ideal state. He goes into this passage where he uses a lot of uh, terminology that uh, I puzzled over for a whole day and uh, I got everything that I could from uh, other sources within the same subject, but I never translated it. I never went to the to make my own translation. No. Mm. Ignoring the left hand side. Yeah. 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 But I was real puzzled with it and I found a lot of things curious in it. How how important do you think those things might be for your presentation? Not to have resolved them in your own mind. Well that that one wouldn't for my presentation it wouldn't matter. Well, it matters to you personally. But it matters to me, yes, a lot. Could it enhance the talk if you were sure. to? Sure. Oh, oh. Sure, because uh, so far I've been reading uh, and understanding pretty well. But when I got to that part, uh, I was uh, real pleasant. See, Plato describes the allegory of the cave when he introduces it. He says, we must now talk about the training of the philosopher king as if we are taking a man from Hades to heaven. This is the underworld, the land of the dead, the allegory of the cave, one way of understanding it. Have many, many, many references are made that way in the Republic. The reason I'm mentioning that, this is a little bit of dead. And you're fascinated by what you're finding on the right-hand side. You're saying that if you allow yourself to continue with dedication and the kind of work that you do, that would drive you over to the left side and that will enhance the very work you're doing. Yes. Well, why aren't you doing the left hand side? Why? It's hard. More? Come on, it's hard. And there's uh, so much I want to read and I feel like uh, I want to get a whole view of it and uh, I, uh, it's not that I'm not going to go to it. It's just that uh, I want to finish the work, go through it. To, to, pre to present it? Mm, or what? Hopefully, yes, eventually. Because there's, uh, there's a lot to be seen. I, I found some real beautiful things in there that I sure would love to show. But... Uh, the parts that puzzle you in the uh, cave or the upper world? In the cave. <laughs> it's getting closer, isn't it? If that's what the mind is doing. Yeah, then you're dealing with the upper part, the structure, the inside structure. Right. Fascinated with the right part. Right. 
You recognize the other part, the left side is very significant for you, but you would face a hard task. It's not essential to do it for this particular purpose, which is to give a report, but you know it would enhance it if you were to do so. You know exactly where to go to do it. All right? Yeah. Hmm. And you're finding some very fine insights, standing in awe, I presume, of some of the connections you're making. Right. Sure. Yeah. And it's a very beautiful dream, of course. But it's focusing, the thing that we're focusing on is the, the very puzzle in the dream, and we're playing along these lines to see whether we can help explore it. Right. And uh, you couldn't have come with a better dream for our purpose tonight. <laughs> so let me ask you then. Uh, now, this, this is very simple. Right? For the key passages that you know you need to translate, how much time would it really take? if you were to take the time to do it right? A week. A week. And you have the kind of time available to do it? No, and my time is going to get even more tight as, as when it comes along. Yeah. When would you have the week you need to do it? Next year. Next year is January. No, I'm But I'm not going to stop working. I mean, I work on it all the time. Like, well, we, come on, try it again. Okay. Uh, there are some passages that you know are more are central, which you should pay, pay some time, put some time in to do it. Let me ask you something. Okay. See, could you work with anybody? Could you work with anybody? Yes. Would that enhance it? Oh, yes. Are you? Will you? Could you? Should you? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Will you? Were you planning on it? When? As soon as uh, she gets through reading it one time through, uh -huh. then we'll go for the jump in. Uh -huh. So. Well, I helped you with Yeah, but you help me a lot anyway. She helps me a lot. Yeah, sure. Are there other people who know the kinds of languages the Greek that yes. could help you? Yes. Are you reluctant to engage them? Yes, I am. And no, I I, I talk to Rod. I try to talk to him once a week, but uh, <coughs> we throw ideas around. But uh, mm -hmm. you know that, right? You said, but it's hard to to put uh, involve people that live so far away from me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. But could you? Do you have a way of getting copies of the particular sections that you're interested in sure. and giving it to people other than this one person you mentioned who could help you with it? Sure. What would what will it cost you to do it? Just do it. <laughs> if you were to gain help, would it take you a week? Oh yeah. The same week with help? Mm -hmm. So with or without help, it'd still take you one week? Uh-uh. <laughs> What is come on? What's the conflict? Well, a week in in, uh, in this kind of uh, in in, a, in an environment where I can do my my outside work mm -hmm. and also work uh, at night because mm -hmm. I find that very enjoyable too. Yeah. But uh, I I've taken uh, weeks off and during those weeks that I take off I study I study a lot. But also I did a lot of that work. Uh, after work, and I stayed up late working and had a real great time. I don't know why I felt good with that. I presume you're not into Chinese. Is that I could be wrong? Are you? Are you into the Chinese no. calligraphy? Okay, all right. But that uh, that's that section that I'm going to get into. It's. I know it's going to take a lot of work, and, uh, and I know there's people out there that have, that have spent a lot of time in it, and uh, I meant to ask, 
Do you, do you hear what I'm hearing? Come on. That you're expressing a certain reluctance to, to, to work with others. Yes. And what's that costing you? It's costing the insight. Yeah. Just working on one side. <coughs> Maybe you need support on the other side. So now we're taking the same images and pushing it that way. This may seem kind of trite, but it seems like everything you're saying is the whole fact that the skeleton is missing its leg. Do it again. The, the, the skeleton is its only torso. Yes. There's nothing. That's right. That's support. That's right. And. Suggesting that it'd be good to know that as a boy, it would have the whole he would structure. Puzzled by his odd skeleton. Right. Okay, you give it back to him and let him. Right. Now that you reflect on that, I agree. Ah, I see. Now that was very helpful. Notice the way you're doing it. You're staying with the material. You're giving it back to him. It has to fit what's been developed. Fits into a kind of structure. And that was very helpful. Thank you. Therefore, you know what we're doing? We're, we are together, meditating together on the logos, which is the meaning of this particular kind of image. And therefore, you see in philosophy, the images in the dream are symbols. And they serve a higher function because the problems we have on a personal level aren't any different than on the highest metaphysical issue. The problems you have in meditation are the same problems you have wherever you have a problem. Same problem is going to occur in meditation or in creative work or anything else because both are birthing from the soul. So, thank you very much for sharing it. Thank you for your help. So I will get a glass of tea and invite you for some tea because I'm dry as a bone. When he, talk, he talks about Jupiter and Scorpio, would that be... How would that fit? Please do it. What images come to mind in terms of Jupiter and Scorpio? Is that fair The image uh, that I saw that night was was so vivid. I mean, I saw the Milky Way in, in the axis that it was turning, and I could, and um, I can I know what where Scorpio is, and uh, I know where Jupiter is, and it just happened to be in perfect alignment with the Milky Way and it had depth to it and it was so clear that uh, you could just about see the the cosmic dust clouds that were obscuring part of the Milky Way I mean the vividness was just great so yeah. let's see I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah. I have no idea what Scorpio and Jupiter are would you tell me what, what, uh, what they mean? Yeah. So you because it's yeah. easy for me uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. What what is this Scorpio for you? What does it represent for you? For me? No. Yeah. Scorpio. Uh, it just represents the summer for me because uh, I summer? started I started watching Scorpio uh, when I would do some work and then I would go outside at night and, and uh, or even looking from my window I can see it. Uh -huh. And uh, it just represents this whole summer, and, and uh, Jupiter has been right along with it all this summer. And uh, to me, it just re uh, represents uh, insight. What? Insight. Jupiter. Jupiter is the name Jupiter. for Zeus and Rome times, right? And Zeus is the word for intellect. So you can do those kinds of trips on it. 
but you have to make sure it comes out of town. Insight. Yeah. How do you do Just from the inside? Just from the insights that I've been having while I've been uh, while I've been uh, looking at the stars. As a matter of fact, I wrote one. I wrote, uh, made a picture of Scorpio uh, and how Jupiter was connected with it after I had made a, a certain connection earlier in the month. What was that connection? I forgot. I, oh. I wrote it down somewhere. And, uh, been a great summer. What, if, if you were to describe Scorpio to someone like myself who has no knowledge of what the idea means, what would you tell me about it? Come on. What does it represent? Scorpio is just a constellation that uh, comes out in the summer. Yeah. Does it have any other meaning? To me, not until the summer. No. Okay. It has no associations? If someone is born under Scorpio, what would that mean? Hmm? You, don't, you don't do that. Okay, that's good. It has to come out of you. It's just a way of identifying the heavens. Okay. But he's talking about summer. Like, what is this about su this, this, this summer that will oh. be related in, in the sense of Scorpio? I'm not clear why we take that form. No. Well, in, in the dream is because I saw it the night before, and uh, and then it reappeared in my dream, and just a little bit of also, and it was the same connection that I saw with my eyes I made with my mind in my dream. Okay, let me see if I can help. All right. He already told us what Scorpio means to him. What does it mean? Summer. Now you have to talk about that summer means something to him. He mentioned it before. That's a certain kind of time that he has available. Right? He, your time is, is seasonal, I presume, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what does summer therefore mean in terms of your experience? A time you for what? Study. what? That's a time when you can study. That's what you That's what you're, right? And Jupiter for you means inside. So the time for study and seeing or insight are connected. And you move on now to the third term, which is the Milky Way. Remember how he talked about it? The dust, you could see the dust, right? So talk about that, sir. Uh, that was the most uh, the most significant part of, of, of the dream was the Milky Way. The what? The Milky Way, the most significant part of most significant. significant. In what way? Good news. I thought I heard that. Because of its vividness. And uh, the way it was uh, in a north and south position. And, uh, and the depth that it gave to Scorpio and Jupiter. See, the depth it gave to what that represents. You see? What is the depth it gave to it? Greater depth to those things? So the Milky Way is functioning how? To give greater depth to the process of insights, the connection of insights and his work, which he really wants to do. And he's blocked at this point because he knows he needs a week of a certain kind of work to accomplish his goal. And I imagine you're going to hold back from I mean, you're not going to hold back from giving your talk until you get your week. I presume you may want to give it earlier. And that may cause some kind of interesting state of mind for you, might it not? Like you want to do it, you're prepared for it, there's a key part that's missing. Uh, I'd like to take the time out to do that key part and make it better. But you also have the interest in giving it. So kind of caught in that kind of a bind. And 
so with all that beauty and everything else, you got the skeleton right in the middle of that dream. <laughs> and half of the skeleton, which was very important. Yeah. You know, one of the things he said, too, is that it's been such a great summer. And you say that a little so while ago, that mm-hmm. you had a great summer. Mm-hmm. So, and, and with this representing his, the, with the firmament, with representing his summer being very bright and clear as if mm-hmm. they take it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it seems like you had a lot of insights this yeah. summer. And the, like the mm-hmm. eagerness is carrying mm-hmm. him along. Mm-hmm. And the greatness of the heavens. Louder? I said the greatness of the heavens. Yes, yes, and the beauty, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. up his way, yeah. you saying. And therefore we hope we have brought you to reflect more deeply on the skeleton and all of the things connected with it. And it's, I want to thank you for sharing it with us. Good thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? All right. I know... What? Well, just to reiterate what I saw last time, because I noticed again how much effort you're putting into staying with the words, the meaning of what he's saying about the meaning, mm-hmm. his particular understanding of each of these terms, because you've come in several times and given an understanding mm-hmm. that I noticed is from not the way he presents it. That's right. You don't want your understanding. See, every person is a great book. Really, every person is a great book. And therefore you have to treat it like a great book. Right? You be cautious, got to respect it, got to respect the person's words. And if you want to communicate. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you.